When the call first came in, I was ashamed to pick it. I couldn't believe I omitted to touch base with some of my friends during this past Yuletide. And she was one of them. The call came again. And this time, I picked. And she told me the story of the past few weeks of her life. She had some malaria-like symptoms, feverish feelings, and body aches. So she went to the hospital, and the doctor decided to do a malaria test which came out negative. However, because she was deeply involved in a close relative's wedding arrangement, she shoved the feverish feelings aside and trudged on. But as the feverish symptoms refused to go away, she found herself in the hospital again. And this time, the doctor suggested she take the COVID-19 test. It came out positive. But even before the result came out, she found herself already on admission with poor oxygen saturation. She spent the next 10 days on oxygen. And she wasn't even conscious enough to know it. At the end of the 10th day, she had to start learning to sit up. And took, it took many more days for her to start learning to walk again. This is a 40-something-year-old person learning to walk all over again. COVID-19 is not a scam or scheme. It is not a joke. It is not some conspiracy theories. It is real, a killer virus that is currently ravaging the world in a second wave. In the last two weeks alone, two prominent old students of my secondary school died from COVID-19 related complications. It is such a shame that even as of today, there are still people who think COVID does not exist. There are all sort of conspiracy theories about how Bill Gates wants to depopulate the world and had colluded with China to bring up this COVID story. Some said it was created for economic reasons so that investors in vaccine companies could make money. A popular televangelist said it was caused by 5G technology. Some said it was the new world order that will lead to the emergence of the Antichrist. Others said the Democrats were behind it to discredit Trump. Yet, others said it exists, but it's not in Nigeria because our weather is special or we are generally a stronger species of homo sapiens. We can go on and on, but let me tell you with all sense of responsibility, COVID is real. It is a killer. And guess what? Just like we crossed over into this new year, COVID also did. And the second wave is worse in Nigeria. Here is it. While I agree that there have been many questions left unanswered about the COVID phenomenon, there is one thing that is not in doubt. There is a virus called COVID-19 ravaging the world. I wish to advocate that we take more seriously the non-pharmaceutical measures of social distancing, wearing of masks, and hand hygiene. It is the minimum we can do as responsible citizens to preserve our own health and those of others. This COVID season shall pass. I still want to be here when it is all over. Mm. I know you want to be too. Do your part. Do your part. And doing your part means being responsible enough to stay at home if you don't have to go Correct. out. The first wave taught us how to work from home. True. You're not proving anything by going to the office. Already the state governments have said, you know, from level this to level this, mm. stay at home and work from home. Mm. We saw, we survived the first wave. Yes. But we're, we're seeing more deaths seemingly the with, with the second wave because we're... we're, we're Taking it, we're more like, like a desical. Yeah, heart. we're like a desical. Well, it's killing all the elites. Well, it's their, it's their disease. <laughs> no, it's not a disease it's for the, the elites. We hear about the elites because they're popular, they're True. important right. people. True. That's right. why we know when they pass on. There are a lot of everyday, ordinary people dying that we don't know about. True. So be responsible. That party can wait. I wanted to go to the movies during the holidays. Then I thought to myself, it's a, it's a, it's a so public place. A place. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of social distancing will be there? Why don't I just stay at home and watch Netflix? Or just 
just watch myself. <laughs> why, why, I agree you know? with, why I agree with your position, I also feel that um, we should allow this COVID-19 commentaries and analysis to come from professionals and scientists in terms of how the disease, the nature of the disease and its future. Because so we, have, we, have a, we have a situation where we have a lot of illusionists. Uh, we have a lot of clergymen dumbling into this whole thing, mystifying it, mm. concocting it mm. with relating it to fear. end time mm. and uh, the rest of it, and then creating a lot of fear okay, sure. in people who we have to give up certain material things in order for them to find solace yeah. with their creator. So I, I'm, I'm begging people who do not understand, who, if you are not a virologist, you are not a scientist, you do not understand medical science, or you are not a medical doctor, we should not keep telling people about the way the disease operates. Let's stop allow professionals. What you yeah, don't know. Yeah, stop spreading what you don't Let the professionals do it. What you can do is to take the measures. Use your face masks, you know, you know, wash your hands, stay indoors, stay away from people, don't go to crowded places, things like that are things we should maintain. But as to mystifying it and then creating some some issues about it. It is so it is so painful that in Nigeria we abuse this freedom of speech. It's not just Nigerians. No, I think the government of Nigeria of also has a role. It has a role to play. You can't say keep social distances, wear your mask, and then tell us to go and register for new. Uh -huh. That is a uh -huh. different story again. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Government so you negate strategy? what you're telling us to do. You to tell do. us, yeah. and then you give us two weeks to do it. Okay, very well, they've extended it, but what's, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. We're all still scrambling to mm -hmm. get our name done. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the places crowded. People are on a queue. I see, I've seen images and images of people on the queue for NIN. They're not wearing masks. They're not keeping social my distance. Friend calls and nobody's it, enforcing it there. My, my, friend, friend, my yes. friend calls it the arrogance of the elites because we see um, parties being held every other weekend. And who the, are the, the beach people during the festive season? Who are the people who can afford to pay for these event centers? They're the elites. The oh. people who ought to set the example for their security man, driver, you know, um, household um, staff, you know, to follow suit, are the ones who believe that because maybe I can do... They're powerful people. Maybe I can do mm -hmm. COVID tests, so, you know, it won't affect me. But I'm very interested in your French story because the doctor should have, with what has been happening around the world, mm, suspected yeah. COVID the first time she came with malaria symptoms. You know. Exactly. I mean, yeah. how do you but, allow but, somebody... But before COVID, we've always had malaria. No, but <laughs> within the last one year, somebody comes to you with malaria symptoms. If you tell me that you have malaria now, the first thing that crosses my mind is COVID. Yeah. Chuka. True. Mm -hmm. But should it be that uh, and then of course we have radical? We, we have to try and um, stop people who should know better from spreading, you know, this sort of um, COVID-19 is a scam thing. Look at the governor of Kogi State. That man is a disgrace. What's his name? Yahaya Bello. Have you have you, you must have watched his own yeah. take on COVID-19. He said COVID there's no COVID. He said there's no COVID. He's a disgrace to this country, to his state. And he wants to I mean, he's a jackass, it's, frankly. He's contesting for presidency. Yes, yeah, so his people are begging Be careful him. how you talk to our next president. candidate. He's not our <laughs> next <laughs> president. Chuka will not agree with you that he can lead the country. <laughs> you will be surprised. He may, he may win 2023 presidential election. <laughs> No, he can if Bukhari is. So, I mean, come on. I mean, Anyone can. anything can happen in Nigeria. There yeah. you go. Like the book written by Lola Shonei, Baba Shegi's Wives. Social media went agog with a paternity story which had many of us asking questions. Over to you, Chuka.